without taking much time, I will uh, introduce my, our first uh, panelist, uh, uh, Dr. Dilacho Adibo. He has been my mentor and is associate professor at, uh, uh, of pediatric cardiology and radiology at uh, McGovern School of uh, Medicine, uh, University of Texas Health Science Center at Houston. And Dr. Adibo served as director of pediatric cardiac MRI and pediatric cardiac CT scans at uh, Children's Hospital, uh, Children's Hospital uh, uh, Houston. He is also service program director at uh, Pediatric Cardiology Fellowship. So he has trained many uh, uh, fellows and recently published uh, uh, a book on cardiac CT scans and advances. And he will uh, give his um, presentation on uh, advances in uh, three cross-sectional uh, three-dimensional imaging, uh, especially cardiac CT scans and cardiac MRI. Uh, Dr. Adibo, uh, welcome. Thank you, Arpit, and thank you all for uh, organizing this session. And uh, really, this is a, an honor to be part of this team. And uh, yeah, I'll be talking on uh, advances in pediatric cardiac CT and the cardiac MRI. Unfortunately, I don't have anything to disclose. Uh, as we all know, cardiac imaging plays a key role in the diagnosis of uh, heart disease in general particularly in the congenital world. Uh, we use different imaging modalities, echocardiography, catheter angiography, uh, MRI, and the cardiac CT. When it comes to echocardiography, there is limitations because of acoustic windows, uh, depending on the uh, body size of the patient. And also echocardiography is not the best tool for uh, extracardiac vascular structures. Therefore, the cross-sectional imaging recently really uh, doing uh, uh, a good uh, complementary uh, work to the echocardiography for anatomic evaluation. Uh, when it comes to MRI, it has a, it's a very powerful tool for quantitative assessment of uh, function in the chamber size, uh, flow quantification, and the tissue characterization, whether that is inflammation related like myocarditis, uh, or ischemia related with uh, delayed enhancement or uh, any cause of myocardial scar or fibrosis or tumor characterization. And uh, the MRI now has become a very good tool for diagnostic and the management guidance where I don't go into details. This is going to be discussed by Surin uh, and in, this, uh, in this session. And when it comes to any imaging modality, there are some limitations. When it comes to MRI, prolonged imaging time, particularly for sick patients requiring general anesthesia. And uh, you know, it is not that fast and uh, uh, easily uh, performed. Therefore, it's usually restricted because of that reason. Additionally, there is high susceptibility for uh, metallic artifact. Cardiac CT is increasingly being used because of recent advances in technology, improved image quality with temporal and spatial resolution, and the image acquisition time has significantly decreased with our newer scanning techniques, with the newer scanning uh, 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 equipment. When it comes to the history of cardiac CT, uh, Honsfield started, uh, developed the technology like in early 1970s, but over the last four decades, there is a big progress. You know, not long ago, we were using single source CT scanners. So now we have dual source CT scanner, the new, newer generation ones with uh, two X-ray tubes and the two corresponding detectors. And in our hospital, our current new scanner has temporal resolution of 66 millisecond, uh, which is a big jump from the older scanners. When we see the radiation exposure in comparison with the CAT, uh, the Watson and the colleagues uh, showed non-gated CT, which usually uses a low radiation dose. They found uh, 0.74 millisievert as compared to 10.8 millisievert for uh, cardiac catheterization, which is like more than tenfold uh, high radiation with diagnostic cut as compared to uh, chest CT. In our institute, we looked at single source and the dual source uh, radiation dose exposure. And uh, from single source, we found 0.6 millisievert. And with dual source prospective gated technique, the median effective radiation dose is like 0.31, which is like three, four chest X-rays. When it comes to the anatomic delineation with cardiac CT, 
it is not only this uh, cardiac part with the lunate. You can see the airway narrowing here with double aortic arch. Sometimes you have uh, equal sized arches like this one where we guide the surgeons uh, which arch to divide and you have also airway information. And this is the patient double aortic arch, but you can see the hypoplastic segment of this posterior left arch component. And this really helps uh, for our surgeons to look at this anatomy before they go in and where to divide uh, the uh, hypoplastic arch component. And sometimes what happens is you can have additional uh, ligamentum component which may need division. And sometimes what happens is the arch may be uh, on the right side, the dominant arch, and the left side descending, which will be substrate for circumflex arch. After division of double aortic arch, that circumflex arch may still remain as a substrate for vascular ring, and uh, uh, that needs uncrossing of the aorta. Therefore, this gives a good uh, anatomic information for our surgeons before they go in. And uh, this is a patient with tricuspid valve atresia who underwent right atrial uh, to right ventricular uh, conduit placement, very unusual procedure. It was being done all the days, but not that commonly done these days. As you can see here, this is uh, the conduit which is placed from right atrium to the right ventricle towards right ventricular outflow tract. Here is the pulmonary valve. This is reconstructed cardiac CT image, functional CT image, and you can see calcified conduit here. This showed uh, this good anatomy for our surgeons, uh, what to do next. This is the CNA image, functional CT CNA image, which is like comparable to MRI CNA image. You can see significantly dilated right atrium, atratic tricuspid valve, relatively smaller uh, right ventricular cavity that right atrial dilatation is happening because of this uh, narrowed conduit from right atrium to the right ventricular outflow tract here. And this is eight months old infant with very unusual arch anatomy, as you can see here. And uh, echocardiography cannot delineate this arch well because you have multi level obstructions, post stenotic dilatations, and a very unusual origin of this subclavian artery from underside of the arch and the curving around and the going like this. Uh, but having this anatomy really, we suggested to repair this like interruption repair taking out this all abnormal structure, reimplanting the subclavian to the uh, ascending aorta, as we can see here on this post-op CT. And that uh, body structure is completely removed with mild narrowing on the anastomo distal anastomosis. Otherwise, the infant got a good repair because this anatomy is well delineated with three-dimensional imaging. And uh, this is a newborn with mixed anomalous pulmonary venous connection. We were taught pulmonary veins are four to on two on each side, but uh, you know, with the this advanced imaging technique, we are seeing really more than that. You can see this mixed total vein uh, going to the portal hepatic system, vertical descending vein, and you can see at least three veins here attaching to the confluence, and then two veins on the left side, additional vein heading up to the SVC with. Uh, another one, one from the right, one from the uh, one from the right, the other one from the left. We are looking from the back of the patient. You can see like seven pulmonary veins uh, in this patient. And this is a six-year-old patient with unusual location of coarctation. If you are doing echo, you will see this part of the arch. You may think that the arch is normal, no coarctation, but you can see mid-thoracic aorta significantly hypoplastic. This is pre-op imaging and uh, post-intervention after stent deployment, you can see still some uh, narrowing distal to the uh, stented area, but CT scan shows you that if you do MRI, there will be significant uh, metallic artifact from the stent. And uh, coronary evaluation is another important area where cardiac CT plays a major role. MRI is a good tool for older patients and uh, adults, but in younger patients with fast heart rate, the, CT, the MRI coronary images are not great, but with the CT, uh, you can see it better with better uh, spatial resolution. As we can see here, patient with anomalous origin of left coronary artery from right coronary sinus of Valsalva. And uh, when it is bifurcating here, uh, you know, we had a concern for interceptal component of this, as you can see on this reconstructed image. When we did virtual, uh, virtual angioscopy uh, to look through the lumen to see if the ostium is uh, slit like or just around the normal ostium, 
uh, as you can see here, the on pass view of this basal with the moving uh, picture down here. And you have also here the axial component. And you can see that from traveling from one vessel, we are traveling from the right coronary side here, coming to the osteal area, which is wide open. And now we are on the left side on the osteal area. There is a little bit of change, but there is no significant, it's little like opening on this patient and we cleared the patient from any intervention. And uh, this is six months old infant with single ventricle physiology. We wanted to assess uh, flow distribution to the lung and the, to the systemic bed. Uh, when you see here significantly punched out signal D phasing here uh, in this region and the, the CT scan shows you here, this is tracheostomy tube, but resulting this is significant artifact effect, but on cardiac CT, you see all the structures, the arch volume rendered picture here, you can uh, see the sun ocean with the clip there. That is the sun ocean to the pulmonary arteries, therefore, there is a you know, metallic artifact limitation on MRI. Even though we didn't get the flow information, we got a good anatomic information on this infant. Uh, this is another baby with the hypoplastic left heart syndrome. You can see here the multi-level narrowing of the sano shunt, RVPA conduit. Uh, the other concern was for coronary kinking because of depressed function, but you can see a nice uh, DKS anastomosis with a nice uh, proximal coronary arteries. And uh, this is a four-year-old with Williams syndrome, multiple stents in the arch, in the branch pulmonary arteries. You can see that how CT depicts all the anatomy very well without any uh, signal effect. And uh, this is 47-year-old male detransposition. Those days, there was no arterial switch, but the patient underwent atrial switch. And you can see here, this patient has patent right pulmonary veins, but left pulmonary veins are completely gone, complete occlusion with hypoplasia and the ground glass opacity on the left lung. And you can see this function is significantly depressed. And there is a pacemaker lead here in the atrium, uh, but that is not really affecting our image quality. You can see right ventricular aorta, nice CNA image. You can see the tricuspid valve apparatus here uh, with high temporal resolution here. You can see the coaptation defect in the center here, even though there is a pacing lead artifact in the left ventricle, it didn't affect our contouring and the function assessment with this cardiac functional cardiac CT. When it comes to cardiac angiography, you know, it is invasive procedure, particularly if it is only for diagnostic purpose, you know, really complications related to vascular injury and overlapping effect of adjacent structures relatively high radiation dose, uh, uh, ionizing radiation dose, uh, it is important to, you know, merge CT images for fluoroscopy uh, to better understand the anatomy and uh, decrease the radiation exposure. And we have this patient uh, with a total infant with anomalous uh, total pulmonary venous return uh, after repair. And we can see here a discrete narrowing of those uh, uh, pulmonary vein anastomosis to the atrium and we merged that uh, segmented CT image to the fluoro system and pinpointed the location of that narrowing so that our intervention team uh, could balloon it. Therefore, this is faster, quicker, safer procedure when we are merging the CT images to the fluoro system with less radiation exposure and the successful uh, ballooning. Electrophysiology intervention also uses cardiac CT Im images. We have here this teenager with pulmonary vein focus, left lower pulmonary vein focus, atrial tachycardia. And uh, we gave a segmented image of this uh, uh, CT image merged to the electroanatomic mapping. You can see radio frequency ablation here focused to that ostium of the pulmonary vein to isolate that uh, focus of uh, atrial tachycardia. Again, faster, effective, and uh, less radiation dose. When it comes to the three-dimensional modeling, whether it is printing or, uh, or virtual, uh, you need a good image quality. Here, an infant with very complex heart disease, aortopulmonary window, connection between ascending aorta, aortic root and the pulmonary, aortic root and the pulmonary root here. And you can see also on this picture, interrupted aortic arch, the ascending aorta, we are looking on the, from the back of the patient, bifurcating here. Descending aorta is fed by patent ductus arteriosus. We painted a purple color here to show that is PDA and the subclavian coming off here from descending aorta. 
And interestingly, as you can see a P window here, you can see branch pulmonary arteries coming off at the same, uh, at different level from uh, one above, one below uh, the uh, aortopulmonary window. And to get such crispy picture by 3D printing, you have to have a good quality image. Uh, uh, otherwise it is garbage in, garbage out. Uh, and in our center, we uh, really have uh, a big focus on decreasing radiation dose and uh, getting a good image quality. Uh, we have like five cardiologists doing a cardiac CT uh, in our center and all cardiac CTs are supervised by pediatric cardiology at the time of study. And uh, uh, the, we, we optimize all image quality and the radiation exposure from simple guidance of where to put IV for IV contrast to uh, positioning the patient in the, uh, in the scanner with isocenter and adjusting the uh, X-ray tube current and automodulation for uh, optimization of radiation dose. And this is a nine-year-old patient with in utero enterovirus infection, dilated cardiomyopathy with heart failure uh, who needed a ventricular assist device. As you can see on this CT picture, you have uh, annulus of this prosthetic valve and adult sized uh, uh, assist device because there is no pediatric size uh, assist device in the market. We could uh, uh, merge this uh, segmented picture of the device and the, the heart model of the patient, customize to the patient and you can, you can see how uh, this device is far away from the inflow of this prosthetic tricuspid valve. Patient underwent device uh, assist device placement and they're doing well. And uh, as Arpit kindly introduced earlier, uh, since there is not much out there, we published a comprehensive textbook on pediatric cardiac CT and congenital heart disease, which we hope will be great resource for people using this modality for uh, care of uh, uh, congenital patients with uh, uh, patients with uh, congenital heart disease. And uh, here we have uh, three downtowns in Houston, and one of that is uh, uh, Texas Medical Center where our children's hospital is uh, found. And uh, thank you for your attention, and uh, I'm happy to answer any question. Thank you, Dr. Debo. Um, I would uh, uh, keep the questions for the end, but uh, uh, thank you for uh, the nice presentation, amazing cases, especially the functional CT and the, and the, the virtual endoscopy of the coronaries.